first of all, I want to sit back and thank the elders for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening and uh, having the confidence in me that I can uh, uh, give a lesson out to the congregation. And I pray that hopefully what I uh, say today can be a helpful and encouragement to uh, for us to be better stewards in this kingdom. And I start off with uh, the question is, do we value and understand the gift of life that God has given us? You know, I was talking with a good work, uh, good work acquaintance of mine as we were discussing some parental issues in regards to our children. And this friend of mine was addressing an issue with one of her children who was contemplating suicide as a solution for a uh, misjudgment of actions on this younger adult's part. The good thing is that the young man who was uh, between the age of 20 and 22 was talked out of taking that uh, specific action. That is a blessing and, and he is now getting uh, assistance to address his uh, depressive state. But unfortunately, not every situation comes to that wonderful conclusion. When I was in college many years ago, I had the ability to attend a, a group gathering with friends at his parents' house to watch a Super Bowl game. Uh, there was a beautiful young lady who just had all the guys' heads spinning. And yours truly was included in that number. Uh, we all had a great time laughing and enjoying one another's company. Uh, I had the chance to spend time talking to her as uh, did many others and it all seemed well. And again, we're laughing and cutting and having uh, having fun. Uh, this young lady and, and I did not take any classes together while I was at the university. Uh, but the general report on her overall character was that she was a lovely, young, intelligent lady. And I believe that she was even approached by some uh, modeling types of people looking to get her into the fashion industry. So that kind of tells to uh, her attractiveness. I, I came to find out a few years later when I inquired about her, that she had passed away. And the reason for her death was that she committed suicide. If I'm not mistaken, she did not make it past the age of 24 or 24th birthday. And the question comes to mind with so many good things that was going on for her, what would make you think of doing something like this? On the surface, it appeared that she had everything going for her. So, you know, I asked myself, what would be so disturbing in her life that would want her to go against the nature of part of our inner survival being to not want to survive and just to end her own life so abruptly? Was life so difficult that all the solutions presented that committing suicide was the best solution that one could come up with? Just to end it all. With that in mind, I present a simple lesson for you tonight entitled, A Message on Contemplating Suicide. In Merriam-Webster's dictionary, suicide is defined as the act or an instance of taking of one's life voluntarily and intentionally. Now, compared to the definition of murder or murdering, which is defined as to kill a human being unlawfully and with a premeditated malice, Though there is a slight difference of purpose for those these acts, the common fact of this matter is that there is a deliberate intention on act that has been decided to be committed. So we ask the question, why would one want to commit suicide? What do we need to do to understand what this person is going through for them to get to that point in their life? And the other aspect is, are there ways to prevent us to get that to the prevent us to ever get to that point to wanting to ever commit suicide. Let us begin this quick study of this topic by looking to the Bible for solutions where we would see these types of acts performed. By that, we can analyze how the Bible viewed committing suicide. Remember, the Bible is here for our learning so that we may obtain heaven. In the Bible, there are recorded seven individuals who committed suicide. Six individuals in the Old Testament and one particular one in the New Testament. Now, due to the limit of time this evening, I will not go into great details of each of these real life situations. I will leave it to you to take your time to pull out your Bible and read them for yourselves. I'll make sure that you get the scripture so you can follow it. But I will just do a brief summation for you. But that's definitely good reading for you and your family. Definitely to read it. 
Also for the lesson today, I grouped these individuals not due to the dates of when uh, they occurred biblically, but more for the similarities and the reasoning behind the actions on why they committed the act of suicide. The first set of examples of those who committed suicide uh, are those of four individuals that I'll present to you. In Judges chapter 9, again, if you have your pen, please write these down. In Judges chapter 9, we see the story of Abimelech, son of Jeroboam. It is recorded that he became king by some very um, evil methods and conniving methods. Uh, he committed suicide in Judges chapter 9, verses 54. The second and third individuals are in the book of Samuel. And we see the life of King Saul, the first official king of Israel. Now, Saul's journey began with great promise in Samuel chapter 9, but tragically came to a suicidal conclusion in 1 Samuel 31 and 4. Not only did, this, did his life come to a suicidal conclusion, but also his personal armor bearer in 1 Samuel chapter 31 and verse 6. The first person in this group is in 1 Kings chapter 16, starting in verse chapter 9 through 20. And again, that's 1 Kings chapter 16, starting at verse 9 through 20. And it tells the story of King Zimri and his short attempt of reign of Israel. Now, the second set of examples listed as one who committed suicide was one of God's appointed judges over Israel. And his name was Samson, which many of you may know. Uh, the full story of Samson starts in Judges chapter 13. And the conclusion of Samson's life finishes in Judges chapter 16, 26 through 31. Now, the last set of examples listed of, of those who committed suicide were two individuals. Uh, one in the Old Testament, we have, and forgive me if I pronounce it wrong here, but Ahithophel. And in the New Testament, we have Judas Iscariot. The story of Ahithophel starts really to form with the beginning of David with his interaction with his wife Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Ahithophel is the grandfather of David's wife, Bathsheba. But outside of that, the Bible records that Ahithophel was extremely close to David. We first see his biblical appearance in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 12, as one of a close advisor to King David. Now, the conclusion of Ahithophel's life ends in 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23, when Ahithophel commits suicide after the overall failure of Absalom's attempt to seize the throne of his father, David. And we as Christians are quite familiar with Judas Iscariot, one of the original 12 disciples who was handpicked by Jesus himself. His story is probably the most well-known account in the Bible on the tragedy of suicide. And his account of suicide can be found in Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 and 4. So with these seven examples that are given to us in God's word, let us dig deeper into this study and ask the question, why would one want to commit suicide? For this reason, I will present to you about four possible reasons, four possible options. Reason one, committing suicide due to dependence on this world and its possessions. The first four individuals, particularly the three individuals that I brought to you for your consideration, Abimelech, Saul, and Zimri. To be frank, these three were evil individuals. That's a Bible defined evil. Their personal desire of life was wealth and power. And they wanted to obtain the worldly aspect as best as they could by any means necessary even if it meant breaking God's established law and killing anyone that was in their way, family included. These men were determined to obtain personal power for what this world had to offer. Now, when God made it clear to these men that their efforts of, of gain was, would not succeed and all that they fought for by devious means would never come to fruition, in their minds, now in their minds, they had nothing to turn to but to cause their own self-destruction. You know, when I think of these men uh, at that time in history, it reminds me of those leaders like Adolf Hitler or Germany in World War II and uh, Alan Garcia Perez of Peru in 2019, or just a few examples of world leaders that committed suicide as well. 
They were so prideful in the loss of power that they were not willing to face the consequences of their actions. You know, their biblical examples also are reminiscent of the same mindset of those individuals pursuing the, the wealth of this world. Now, did you know that in the 2008 financial uh, crisis, it was recorded in the top 54 industrialized countries in the world that over 6,900 suicides were reported due to the loss of financial wealth in the stock market that physical financial year. Again, these are individuals that could not bear the loss of this world's gains or money. They are so connected to this world and its possessions that their own individual pride cannot get past that level of material loss. Thus, they end their own lives for the material things of this world. When you do evil in this world, you will be removed from this world. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 21 through 22 states, For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Romans 2 and 9, 9 through 11 states, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of person with God. Oh, and for the fourth of that list, and that was Saul's armor guard, who also committed suicide. Though the Bible never mentions anything in regards to this particular person's character, whether good or bad, the lesson we learn from his demise is this. Be careful of the leaders we follow in our lives. Their leadership can lead us also in paths of destruction. For those of you young ones that are listening, Listen, young ones, and I'll ask it this way. Would you rather be a sidekick like Robin to Batman? Or would you rather be the sidekick like Lago, you know, that annoying parrot to Jafar, you know, the villain that was in the cartoon movie Aladdin? Which person would you rather be? Well, my generation might relate more to Mr. Schmize. Uh, You know, he was the henchman of uh, Captain Hook in the cartoon of Peter Pan. So 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, which reads, be not deceived, evil communication corrupts good manners. Young people, listen real clearly on this point. As you're growing up and you're maturing and becoming to learn about life, be careful who you pick as your leaders in life and be mindful of the path that you take. they take you. Learn to know the truth for yourself. Never follow a man blindly, but be wise of what is right and wrong in God's word. Remember that. Reason number two is suicide or death for a noble cause. Going back to Samson, though Samson's passing is considered as a suicide by definition standpoint, his death was that of a sacrificial death. Now, let's be clear. Once you read the book of Samson, Samson had his flaws, which is what really placed him in the situation that he was in. Okay, uh, Particularly, he had desire for what we call exotic women. Uh, and again, that's what really put him in the situation that he was in. Um, his strongest weakness got the best of him. But at the very end, Samson did what was right in the sight of God. Samson never measured up to his full potential. If he had truly focused on what God commanded him to accomplish for the nation of Israel, he might have lived longer and a longer life and accomplished more. But at the end of it all, he accomplished the commandments of God. And again, we consider Samson's death an instance of suicide because he knew his very last actions would lead to his death. But Samson's ultimate goal was to kill Philistines and not himself. As in war, when a soldier gives up his life to fall on a mine or a bomb to save his fellow comrades, 
they understand that the act will lead to their own personal death, but can save the life of others. Reason three, suicide due to guilt and burden for bad choices. Of all the suicides listed in the Bible, there are these last two examples to me, in my opinion, uh, are the most tragic. That of the life of Ahithophel and that of Judas Iscariot. Now remember, there were two Judases that the Lord selected. So we're talking specifically Judas Iscariot. What makes their story so tragic is that they were truly walking in the good path, the right way. But yet at the end, they chose to go against God. Both men made the conscious decision of betrayal of what God had in place. When you take the time to read about Ahithophel, which I really recommend that you do, again, he was close counsel to King David, but he was also considered an extremely wise man, actually one of the wisest of all David's counsel. But despite that knowledge and wisdom, he was charmed by Absalom and picked the wrong side. And you see that in 2 Samuel 15, verses 4 through 6. But again, it directly hurt David tremendously due to the close ties that these two men had with each other. It's mentioned in Psalms chapter 41 and verse 9, but it's stated even more so in Psalms 55, verse 11 through 14. And it reads, wickedness is in the midst thereof, deceit and guile depart not from the streets. For if it if it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. This is referring to Ahithophel. Neither was he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man, mine equal, my guide and my acquaintance. And we took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. And lastly, Judas Iscariot, the disciple that betrayed Jesus to the Jews, thus Christ being nailed to the cross. Just as Ahithophel was close to David, Judas was also close to Jesus as being one of the 12 chosen. Now, instead of repenting and seeking forgiveness, Judas allowed the significant burden of his sin to lead him to, his, to this terrible end, Matthew 27 and 4. These two, these two individuals are also great examples for us today for those fellow Christians who, one, know the truth, accept the truth, walk the white right way of righteousness, but then they turn their back on the truth and never walk it again. Proverbs 26, 10 through 11 reads, the great God that formed all things rewarded the fool and rewarded the transgressors. Is as a dog who returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his father. Now, one truth about each of these stories is this they didn't have to end the way they did. Each individual could have chose a different path. And God reminds us time and time again that no type of pain that we go through, no matter how painful it is, God will turn it around for good somehow and use it to strengthen us and to help others. Even if it's due to our own decisions, good or bad as they may be. One last reason to bring about in regards to committing suicide, especially with this particular generation and the lesson be yours tonight. It's really the increase of suicide to a generation not knowing the gospel and their own self worth That's what we're facing today. Over the course of time with the Bible study, there were no particular verses. There are, excuse me, there are particular verses that continue to catch my attention. Though there are various locations in the Bible, the gist of these scriptures make the overall same point. So feel free to write down, write them down for your records and do some personal study on that. Uh, I've had Genesis chapter six, verses five through six, then you go Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Then there's Judges, Judges 13 and 1. There's quite a few in Judges. <laughs> uh, I just picked that, I picked a few. Uh, Psalms chapter 78, verse 8. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 1 and 7. 
Hosea chapter four and one. And again, there's many other scriptures similar to them. But the scripture in my humble opinion uh, tonight that best states the gist of those passages listed and summarizes the way the man is and has been over the course of all time is Judges chapter two, verses 10. And again, that's Judges chapter two, verse 10. And it reads, there arose another generation which knew not the Lord nor yet the works he had done for Israel. Though the statement has been recorded thousands of years ago, today we're looking at a generation now at this time that can easily say the same. We see a rise of suicides for one main reason and one main reason alone. We have a generation that is coming up that does not know the blessing in Jesus Christ and the true gospel that God has provided for salvation for our soul. So what do we need to express to those who go through this level of depression in life when they're content, uh, contemplating suicide? One, let's be very frank on this matter. The Bible views suicide as equal to murder, which is what it is. It's really self-murder. So according to the Bible, suicide is sin. Now, let us also understand Secondly, God is the only one who is to decide when, a, when and how a person should die. We should always consider what the psalmist says in Psalms 31, 14 through 15. But I trust in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute. Secondly, God is the giver of life. He gives it life itself, and he can take it away. Job 1, verse 21. Suicide, the taking of one's own life, is ungodly because it rejects God's gift of life. No man or woman should presume to take God's authority upon themselves to end his or her own life. Suicide is sin. So anyone contemplating it needs to remember that. Each human being is God's unique creation. And none of us have the right to murder God's creation, even if we make ourselves the victim. Reference that in Matthew chapter five, verses 21 through 22. But we can't overcome sin. Lastly, as I mentioned in the previous lessons before, anxiety and depression is quite rampant in our society here in the United States. Perhaps scars from past hurts have resulted in an overwhelming sense of rejection or abandonment. They may lead to self-pity, anger, bitterness, vengeful thoughts, or unhealthy fears that have caused problems in some of the, your most important relationships. But you have to understand that you are not the only one going through trials and tribulations. The Bible's filled with people who go through trials and tribulations that, that we go through. You are not alone. Life comes in seasons, it's ups, it's downs, and they won't always hurt this badly. God will always provide a way out. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. This is why it's so important that we continue to spread the gospel to those that are lost so they can truly know the wonderful gift of life that they are blessed with. You are a unique creation of God. You're the only you in the entire universe. And you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms chapter 139 verses 13 through 16. Now, how is there ways to prevent us to ever get to the point of wanting to commit suicide? Trust in God for all our efforts. If we as Christians come across someone who is looking to uh, at suicide as an answer or contemplating suicide, we should always take it as a serious matter and urge them to get help and continue to follow through with that individual. 
Also, we should urge him or her to see a doctor. You know, many times depression or some physical problem may be the root of the suicidal thoughts. Proper medical treatment may alleviate the suicidal thoughts and return that person to healthy thinking. I stop here to say this. If you are viewing this live stream right now and considering suicide, please seek help now. Feel free to contact anyone here at this congregation and we'll do everything in our power to help you. Now, if you feel more comfortable and want to call for other assistance, here's some other options. One, you can call 988, which is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, just like you would call 911 for emergency assistance. Secondly, you can contact the 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. That's a suicide prevention hotline. And lastly, get yourself to a hospital if you can, or go alert someone in your home, your apartment, your workplace, wherever you are. Do whatever it takes to get help. There is never a problem that God cannot solve. And I repeat that again. There is never a problem that God cannot solve. But most importantly, God's word when properly followed is also designed for us to secure our place in eternal glory. And I've gone through these verses before, but I always I like these verses. Uh, Proverbs chapter three, Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse seven. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. And again, the last verse I will reference for you to this evening, and the lesson is yours. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Oh, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. And again, it's Hebrews chapter 10, 23 to 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider no, consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the many of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And that day approaching is us reaching heaven. There is never a problem that God cannot solve. He will never give up on you. Just don't give up on yourself. Thank you again for your time.